Firstly, thanks to Ben for organising this session and thank you all for coming. Those that managed to view Dominic's pre-session content on QM Plus will know that the approach we are promoting for e-learning is what we call blended learning. So I thought I would begin by way of introduction with why a blended approach could be beneficial and then focus on what we have learned using this approach in the dental school so far. Then I'll talk a little bit about how we have been implementing this approach. I guess our aim is to get you excited about blended learning so you might think about ways you could utilize it in your own teaching. So e-learning allows us to use multimedia, particularly videos of procedures. It can provide various degrees of interactivity. It can also provide a resource for students to return to as often and when they need it. This is particularly useful in dentistry when students may not undertake a specific procedure until sometimes, sometime after they've actually learned about it. We're able to track student progress and it can provide a safe place for students to make mistakes using clinical scenarios and other forms of formative assessment. So those are some of the proposed generic advantages to e-learning. What we have found is that dental stu students appear to really like this approach. Students provide very useful feedback about the e-learning and they seem to know what they want from their learning. They appreciate links to prior learning so that they can see the bigger picture and how their learning links together. And they particularly appreciate the self-assessment elements. It makes them more active learners and they do seem to come to sessions more prepared. Tutors report that it enhances practical and clinical sessions and we feel it supports peer review, consistency in the message being delivered and improved pedagogy as there is a process of thinking about your current teaching, where the gaps or limitations lie and what you're trying to achieve when you start developing your online learning. So we have been focusing mainly on year two content. So I'll show you a few examples of what we've been developing. Firstly, some recorded lectures. Students have a number of perio lectures from Wendy. These are delivered as online lectures. They're divided into topics with assessment questions after each topic before they proceed to the next topic. At the moment, the first lecture is face-to-face. -face. There are three online lectures and there's a final face-to-face -face lecture. We feel that the face-to-face -face lectures are still important to keep contact and in engagement with the students um, and we haven't had great success in getting students to ask questions online using the discussion boards. So this is an area we're still trying to develop further. We've also then designed a series of perio tutorials using the online tutorial as preparatory work before the practical and clinical sessions. We're using a series of online tutorials in Transition 4, again in a blended way, before practical and clinical sessions. The teaching of local anaesthesia is another area where we have applied this approach. We have content in Year 1 as part of Fundent, and then the main part of the teaching for Year 2. This now consists of four online tutorials with modules on anatomy, pharmacology, infiltration and block techniques. There is a final face-to-face -face lecture on complications and then the practical sessions where the students undertake injections on each other. So again, here is an example where we add links to their previous learning in year one, those biochemistry lectures, pharmacology lectures, so we can support the students to see the links and the importance of their prior knowledge. We are hoping to develop some further modules for local anaesthetic for later years, focusing on, for example, what to do when a local anaesthetic fails. Amitha has been working on developing some content for the fifth years on management and leadership. This was combined with a symposium where Amitha had film segments from people in leadership roles explaining their role and their understanding of leadership. She also has plans to develop further content on clinical governance. So how do we approach blended learning? Probably the best way is to find out what concepts students find challenging. Explore these issues with the students to understand why this is a difficult concept and then plan your e-learning helping to address these challenges in a creative, interactive way. Then of course we want to evaluate whether this has improved student understanding. We are going through this process at the moment as we work on developing a tooth morphology resource. Tooth morphology was identified by students and staff as an area of difficulty. We ran some student focus groups and from that decided on the format and design of the resource. We currently have students helping to create the resource, taking images and actually gathering the content. This project is being led by Swati and Ben with a grant from the e-learning production scheme. 
So that was kind of a whistle-stop tour of what we've been up to. If you have any ideas for e-learning, the e-learning production scheme is definitely something to consider.